Hello, Patrick here with Urban Carry Holsters, and today we're going to be showing you how to field strip and properly clean the SIG P220. The P220 was developed in the 1970s, and it's actually been chambered in a variety of rounds, including 9mm and 30 Luger. But when SIG decided to move the 220 to the American market, they chambered it in 45 ACP in order to compete with the very popular 1911 platforms. This is an extremely reliable firearm. It's often compared to the 1911 in terms of reliability, and it also comes in 25 different variations, so there's bound to be a good fit for you. We'll get into some more information about this firearm after the cleaning though, so for now, I'm going to turn this over to Chase, and he's going to show us how to take it apart and properly clean it. Of course, I'm going to show you how to do a field strip and a proper cleaning of the SIG P220. Uh, it's a 45 caliber pistol, as mentioned. And of course, what we're gonna do first is make sure that the firearm is clear of any ammo and is safe to work with. So of course, I'm gonna eject the magazine. Okay, no rounds in the magazine. And no rounds in the firearm itself. All right, so with this gun, um, takes down like most SIGs, you have your takedown bar right here, okay? Um, just to show you, you can see a little semicircle notch right up towards the front of the slide. Okay, what you want to do is rack your slide, your slide back and engage your slide catch. Then take this takedown bar and rotate it clockwise, all right, down to about the six o'clock position. This allows for it to, there's a bar right in here and part of it's flat and this allows for that flat end to be set straight up that way when you disengage your slide catch your slide and your frame will come apart so first we're going to work with the slide okay i'm going to take my guide rod and my recoil spring out okay these are two separate parts and we're just set those off to the side and then we're going to take our barrel and i always just usually push up on the ejection port from the other side push up and then grab that barrel and just take it out at an angle. All right. So what we got to do first is get some solution in this gun. Um, here we use uh, Hoppy's Elite Gun Cleaner. Okay, it uh, helps remove any kind of carbon or powder fouling, as we'll call it. It's the excess powder that hasn't been spent or burnt up, um, and it just helps lift that off of that metal. But we're gonna start off with just this. I have on my cleaning rod a 45 caliber brush. All right. Now, when it comes to coating your barrel, um, of course you can use a cleaning rod with a lead on it and just a cleaning patch such as this. But an easier way to do it is just to take that patch and wrap it around your cleaning brush, okay? This will help make sure that the patch gets in between all the grooves and as well as the solution will be set in there quite well. But only use a little bit. I only spray maybe two or three times just to get, again, you just want to coat the barrel. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in through the bore side of the barrel, okay, not the muzzle end. This is uh, how I usually do it, especially with uh, guns that you can take the barrel out of, uh, because you don't want to mess up your crown. Your crown is basically uh, where the rifling ends in your barrel. And of course, if you nick that, say if you have you know, more of a steel rod, um, and this is brass, but still, uh, just wanna avoid nicking that or disrupting that, that rifling, because then it's gonna affect your accuracy. But we're gonna go ahead, and like I said, go in through the bore side, and coat that barrel with that solution. Now, as you can see, it's already lifting some stuff up. But we just wanted to get that coating in there, let it sit. Usually you want to just let this stuff sit for about uh, anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Okay, of course, um, this is gonna go on most, any kind of metal part of the gun, okay? Again, uh, when you are firing your weapon, the, the gases from the, base, the explosion from the, from the round will go all throughout the gun. So any kind of metal part, any kind of place where there's gonna be friction, you wanna use some of this uh, gun cleaning solution. 
Now, I'm gonna put some on the slide, and the easiest way to do that is with a nylon brush. Uh, of course, uh, I have these gun cleaning brushes, but you can even use just a simple toothbrush. But again, just a little bit. And we're gonna go in through on the slide rails, okay, which are right in here. All right, on either side, it's a point of friction. I'm just gonna coat it. Also, underneath, where the uh, firing system is, or the firing pin system is. This is what uh, slides along the extra rounds inside the magazine, and it'll pick up that brass and copper. So just put a little bit on there. And then, of course, I'm gonna get on our bolt face, okay, which is right here. Uh, this will tend to pick up lots of, lots of different powder and copper shavings and everything like that. When it comes to cleaning your bolt face, I always turn the slide upside down. That way I'm not getting any kind of solution inside the firing pin hole. But this also allows me to get in the grooves of your extractor, okay? Um, a lot of times your extractor will get really gunked up and of course then you will have a failure to eject. So you wanna make sure that you get some of this solution in there and just scrub it a little bit, that way it sits. But that's pretty much what you need to do for your slide. Now I'm going to move on to the frame just because I have some more of that cleaning solution on this brush. And again, it doesn't take a lot, but most any metal part I'm going to go over because it will, you will pick up copious amounts of powder and it's just good to hit all these spots. It's even good if you have um, any kind of metal, um, even if you're, I mean, even if your frame is polymer, uh, which this one is not, this one is a uh, aluminum alloy, but just want to get in here. Get a slight little coating. And that's pretty much what you need to do with your, your gun cleaner, okay? Now, something that a lot of people end up not cleaning is your magazine, but it is still important, okay? It has all these different holes in it, dirt, uh, excess powder fouling. It can all end up inside your magazine. So real quick, I just wanna show you um, at least how to take this apart, okay? You have a little detent pin right in there that holds on to the base plate of the magazine. And all you need to do is take a punch, okay? Depress that, and your base plate will start coming off, all right? And that will just slide, and then you have this little buffer here which has that pin on it, okay? Now, when it comes to cleaning a magazine, again, just take your spring out, and make sure that you set it up to where you can put everything back in um, in reverse order. Okay, you don't want to reverse your magazine or anything like that. But that's basically how you take apart your magazine. Now, to clean it, as simple as, you know, getting some solution on your brush, getting inside there. You know where the feed lips are. And again, this just helps coat the firearm, all right. Now with this, I will use one of these leads. Um, you can even use uh, forceps that to grab onto a piece of cloth where you can put it into the magazine and wipe all this excess gun cleaner off. But if you don't, one of these will work just fine. And as you can see, we do have some of that powder fouling inside. Now, that's why it is important to always clean your mag. Um, now, I'm also gonna take a little bit of this gun cleaner, and I'm gonna wipe down the magazine. Well, the magazine spring, I'm sorry. And this, you don't have to clean your magazine uh, as frequent as you would clean your gun, uh, but, you know, every, Every couple of visits to the range, it'd be a good idea just to take your mags apart and do this. Again, 
you want your magazines to feed well and you want it to work just as well as a clean gun. Now we're going to go ahead and put it back together. Of course, I'm just going to go in reverse order, put the follower in. Make sure you put the magazine in the correct way. Okay, of course, you have this smaller end with the angle. That gets inserted first. Then take that buffer with that detent pin. Then take your base plate. And of course, that detent pen just goes right in. But your magazine is now clean. Now that we've had that uh, gun cleaning solution sitting in uh, our gun, we're gonna go back and just give it a nice little scrub down and get all that excess powder that's been sitting in there. Um, what I wanna do first is I wanna scrub out my barrel. Of course, I'm gonna go in through the bore side again. Now, of course, if you can't remove your barrel, this is why these little bushings are great. What this does, is once you insert your brush, okay, this little plastic piece guards that crown so that you don't hit it with your cleaning rod. All right, and of course, you can just give it a nice little clean, but that's if you know you can't take your barrel out again. If you can, I always suggest going in through the bore side. All right, and you just want to give this a couple of pulls. That way it lifts up any of that powder fouling. Now the same way that we coated the barrel with the gun solution, we want to take it out now. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to wrap my cleaning brush with one of my cleaning pads and just give this a run through. Okay, That'll just lift up, as you can see, all that powder fouling. Okay, you Don't want that sitting in your gun. Again, it's, going to, it's just going to affect your accuracy and it's going to make your gun not functional in the future. So again, this is why it is important to always clean your gun. But now that we've done that with the barrel, what I'm going to go through is I'm going to just take another one of these patches and I'm going to wipe down my slide. Now something else you can use, um, especially since uh, some of these grooves are, my fingers can't really get into. Um, so I have these little Q-tips. These are gun cleaning Q-tips. But you can even go to the store and get just the regular regular ear Q-tips. Those will work just fine too. Just something to lift the excess dirt and material that's been left in here. As you can see, again, this is why we clean our gun. But again, I'm going to address where I put all that gun cleaning solution in the slide. And the slide rails underneath the bolt face and the bolt face itself. And make sure you, again you get behind that extractor. Okay, which is right here. So I make sure you clean all around this. Again, that's an important part of your gun. You want your gun to feed normally and eject the spent cartridges. Because if it doesn't, well then you're going to have a gun that shoots only one round and that defeats the purpose of these semi-automatics. But that's basically the slide and the barrel for you. Um, now we also want to clean any kind of metal part so that includes your guide rod and your guide spring or your recoil spring. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this gun cleaner and again, just a little bit, as you can see, just that little spray right there. That's all you'll really need. And I'm just going to give this a little wipe down. And I'll do the same thing with the spring. Whoop. <laughs> See, springs can uh, jump out at you sometimes. So again, like make sure you, that's I mean, that's a good example, okay? Of course, you don't want to lose any parts, so don't be flinging these things around. Uh, I accidentally did, but. Now we're gonna get to the frame, and we're gonna 
just give this a good wipe down. Anywhere that we put any of that gun cleaning solution, inside the magwell too, the feed ramp, Now, of course, I put some in the magazine well, so I'm going to just take one of my, my lead again on my other cleaning rod. Just put a patch through. And just make sure that we wipe it all down. And something that I actually forgot to do was to get some of this gun cleaning solution on my frame rails. So again, this is a point of friction, so it's a good place to address. So I'm just going to do this real quickly. Again, you would want to put this on and just let it sit for about 5-10 minutes. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to show you exactly how to do so. But now that we've gotten that done, of course, I'm going to wipe it all down. No, I absolutely Yeah, we're, we're usually pretty good about that. And we're definitely, if we notice multiple orders, we go ahead and, you know, kind of see if something happens. And then we can double click. And all right. So now your gun is clean. Um, now, a lot of people, I've been using gun uh, cleaning solution, and a lot of people will want to use oil, okay? I do have oil here, but I hardly ever use it. Um, again, this is just a lubricant, really. If you use too much oil in your gun, um, it's going to basically leave that film on top of all of the parts, and then dirt, that powder fouling, is going to stick to it. That's why it's important just to use some gun cleaning solution and not so much oil. Um, now... If you are to use oil, I only ever use just a little bit, and that's just to give you know a slight lubricity to the firearm, especially like I said in any kind of area where there's any kind of friction. So, literally just one little spray, and I use Balisol. Of course, you can use any kind of multi-purpose oil, but I'm just gonna take it, give my slide or well my my barrel a little wipe down just to protect it. Okay, make sure you, again you wipe down your bore area. All right. Again, you want to make sure this feed ramp is nice and polished. It's just going to make your round speed that much easier. But now I'm going to get some oil basically on my slide grooves. Okay, again, this is a point of friction. And then you don't need a lot. I'm also going to address where the barrel meets the slide. Okay, this is another point of friction. And again, I don't use oil as a cleaner, I just use it as a slight uh, lubricant for the gun. But my point is, with oil, try not to use so much. Okay, You really don't need a lot, and sometimes you won't really need it at all. But we've oiled up our gun, we've cleaned our gun, now we're going to put it back together. So what I'm going to start with... It's a slide, of course. I'm going to take that barrel, which I'm going to wipe down just a little bit more. Had a little bit too much oil on it. And I'm going to take that barrel and I'm going to insert it in as, at an angle. Okay? I'm going to drop it, but push it back so that it seats all the way into the chamber. Then I'm going to take my recoil spring and my guide rod, connect those. Insert it just below the barrel. Okay, there's a spot for it. And just be careful because this is where you'll have a spring or a guide rod coming back and hitting you. But it should go in quite smoothly. And then just put it right there on that, on that spot for it on the barrel. Now, this gun, the barrel does not have any kind of real notch for it. It just has a flat face. Um, so make sure when you do put this in here, you're not seating it off to the side like so, okay? You want it to be straight on, just like that, okay? If it's off to the side, 
it's gonna your gun's not gonna work properly but we're gonna reconnect our slide and our frame just find those grooves slide it back on bring it back and engage your slide catch all right after you've done that you can flip up that takedown bar counterclockwise and that locks it in place then release your slide release your hammer and this gun is now ready to take back out to the range. All right, now we're gonna go over some additional details about the SIG P220. This is a newer model 220, and it's come stock from the factory with the SIG Lite night sights. It's a three dot sighting system there, and uh, these are pretty substantial sights. They sit up fairly high there, and they're rugged. You could actually uh, rack the slide to the rear on your belt with these sights. The slide is stainless steel. It's a black nitron finish on there, and it's a matte finish, so you don't get any reflection. On top of that, the top of the slide is curved, so that helps reduce um, glare off the top of the slide as well. The barrel is also stainless steel, and you've got some great slide serrations here towards the back of the slide, and for a combat full-size pistol, this slide is actually really easy to manipulate. Over here on the other side of the firearm, you have your takedown mechanism, which you saw in the video with Chase, and here's your decocking lever and your slide catch and release. Now, like I said, that's a pretty easy slide to manipulate, even for a full-size pistol like this. And now you can see that the hammer is back into the single-action mode. This is a double-action, single-action firearm. And here's your decocking lever. I recommend that you use the decocking lever to bring that uh, hammer back into the double-action position there. Although you can do a manual decocking on this too, but because there's no external safety and you have the decocking lever, I'd recommend just using that. Now your frame is made from an alloy metal, so it's sturdy and uh, will last for years and years. Moving on down here into the grips, here's your magazine release, and I'll get into that here in a minute. But one thing I really love about the 220 is that it comes from the factory with this stippling that really feels like a skateboard grip tape. So you get a nice good grip on the firearm there. You're not gonna have any trouble, even if your hands are sweaty or you're in wet conditions, getting a nice grip on the SIG P220. Now, back to this magazine release. One thing that I really like about the magazine release is the spring's got quite a bit of pop here. In fact, I'll show you this way. See how high that pops up? One thing I love about that is that you know when you release the magazine, you're not gonna have to sit there and try to fight to dig it out. It's just gonna come right out, which is what you want when you're changing a magazine in a combat situation. Now, this is a stainless steel SIG manufacturer um, magazine here, and it holds eight rounds, of course, you can put one in the chamber as well for a total capacity of nine rounds. You've also got a polymer base plate here, and there are extended magazines available out there on the aftermarket. All right, so that pretty much covers it for the SIG P220. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, share it on social media with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on gun care, concealed carry best practices, and how to utilize the full line of urban carry products. Until next time, keep calm and return fire.